Hey guys, let's get more news about Steelers, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. Rookie Peyton Wilson speaks out on playing for Steelers, football heaven. Western Pennsylvania fans consider the Pittsburgh Steelers one of the top NFL organizations. It doesn't sound like rookie linebacker Peyton Wilson would disagree. Although Wilson didn't address where the Steelers rank in terms of NFL franchise prestige, he told reporters the organization's veteran players left him in awe early this offseason. Ball is ball, but seeing how Minka, Fitzpatrick, prepares and how he does prehab and rehab. How they're prepping their body. How they're watching film. I was like a kid in a candy shop, man, Wilson said to the media on June 12. I'm in football heaven here in Pittsburgh, so just continuing to pick up every single piece of knowledge I possibly can. The knowledge Wilson can accumulate this summer could be key for the Steelers in 2024. Veteran inside linebackers Patrick Queen and Alandon Roberts are projected to start. But Wilson could be the number three linebacker in the middle of Pittsburgh's defense to begin the season. Wilson referenced the work habits of safety Minka Fitzpatrick first. But when a reported asked the rookie which Steelers veterans he is talking to most, he answered fellow linebackers Roberts and Queen. Those two veterans have a combined 12 years of NFL experience they can pass on to Wilson. The rookie added that their different styles of play also helps him get a full spectrum of how to play linebacker at the next level. Those little details is one of Wilson's biggest focuses. He told reporters on June 12 that the little details are the bigger difference between college and the NFL. Every single play, every single rep, you can't really waste them, Wilson said. Because at the end of the day, someone on the other side will beat you. In college, you can slack off a little bit, maybe you're just so skilled that you can cover up for it. But out here, if you aren't using the correct fundamentals, not knowing what you're doing, that OC or that player you are going against is going to pick you out. While Wilson has those details in mind every day, he also already knows the expectation in Pittsburgh each year is to win the Super Bowl. Wilson told reporters that all of his fellow rookies already understand that expectation. That means they all will do what it takes to help the team win. My mentality and all of our rookie mentalities is just, whatever role we're asked to do, whether that's be a starter, whether that's be a forward core special teams guy. Whatever we can to help win a Super Bowl, Wilson said. That's why we're here. That's why they brought us on, and whatever role we're presented with, we're just going to hit it head on. Early in the season, Wilson could be asked to play a significant role on Pittsburgh's defense. The Steelers have more inside linebacker depth than they did a year ago, but it's unclear if veteran Cole Holcomb will be ready for the beginning of the season. Holcomb suffered a season-ending knee injury on November 2 last year. Through the spring, he has only performed individual drills. Behind their projected top four inside linebackers, the Steelers also have Mark Robinson and Tyler Murray on the 90-man roster depth chart. Mike Tomlin's fate as Steelers head coach intertwined with that of Arthur Smith. With the announcement that the Steelers have signed Mike Tomlin to a three-year extension, I could not help but think that Tomlin's fate is now intertwined with that of Arthur Smith, whom we signed to a three-year deal earlier this year. Don't get me wrong, I'm glad that we extended Tomlin's contract before the Steelers got into the throes of training camp. I think the extension gives Tomlin the peace of mind to concentrate on making this season memorable for all the right reasons. Make no mistake, Mike Tomlin's contract extension sends a message to the NFL, to Arthur Smith, and Tomlin himself, in my humble opinion. The message to the NFL is this, we have a great coach who has had consistent, regular, season success and we believe in him. The message to Arthur Smith is this, your fate is inextricably tied to Tomlin's fate. Finally and more importantly, the message the Steelers are sending to Tomlin is this, we believe in you. You have never had a losing record in the regular season, but we need to see progress concerning success in the playoffs. What is interesting to me is the fact that a three-year extension puts Tomlin two years shy of matching the 23 seasons that Chuck Knoll was our head coach. 
To put this into perspective, I was born the year Noel became our head coach. I grew up watching those incredible teams of the 1970s. I also endured what I believe was frankly a horrible decade of the 1980s. While we had mostly winning seasons and a few playoff appearances, we did not win the big game as we did four times in the span of six years during the previous decade. For lack of a better term, it would have been easy for the Steelers to move on from Noel after the playoff loss in 1989, but because he had built up so much equity by that point, I believe we allowed him, and rightfully so, to leave on his own terms. While this contract extension has that same feel, unlike Noel, Tomlin has not enjoyed the same success in the playoffs as evidenced by the fact that the last time we won the big game, aka, the Super Bowl, was after the 2008 season, meaning it has been 15 seasons since we hoisted the Lombardy Trophy. Now, we are dealing with the unknown of having a new offensive coordinator, for new quarterbacks, and a new offensive scheme. What could go wrong? Honestly, a lot could go wrong. We may find ourselves talking about Tomlin's first losing season as our head coach. Conversely, we may find ourselves talking about not only a winning season, but a Super Bowl winning season. How great would that be? Obviously, that would be great, but with all the uncertainty surrounding this season, I don't see it happening. What is certain is this, the fates of Mike Tomlin and Arthur Smith are intertwined. If one succeeds, the other will follow suit, if one falters, the other will falter as a result. If the former transpires, all will be right in the world. If the latter transpires, will the Steelers have second thoughts about extending Tomlin? As with most topics we discuss, only time will tell. Dallas Cowboys fans explode over possible Dak Prescott replacement. Dak Prescott could be entering his lame duck campaign as the Dallas Cowboys starting quarterback. There's always the possibility, perhaps likelihood, that the Cowboys sign Prescott to a contract extension either during training camp this summer or following the 2024 campaign if the 30-year-old leads Dallas on a lengthy postseason run towards the franchise's first Super Bowl berth in 30 years. However, Prescott holds plenty of leverage since his cap hit is projected to be $55.45 million for this upcoming season combined with Jared Goff, Kirk Cousins, and Baker Mayfield among the quarterbacks who have already signed mega extensions this offseason. If the Cowboys decide not to bring Prescott back in 2025, Bleacher Report's Brad Gagnon offered an off-the-wall suggestion that if things don't work out with the Pittsburgh Steelers Russell Wilson could potentially open next season as the starting quarterback in Dallas. Unless Jerry Jones and the Cowboys are looking for a bargain bin veteran replacement for Prescott, it's difficult to imagine Wilson being a fit in Dallas. Following two woefully disappointing seasons with the Denver Broncos, Wilson was released earlier this spring and signed a one-year deal with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Last season, Wilson passed for 3,070 yards with 26 touchdowns to eight interceptions, before being benched for the final two games so Denver could avoid the risk of his injury guarantee vesting. Wilson to the Cowboys seems like a last resort, especially if he becomes available because of a disappointing season with the Steelers. Likewise, it is easy to assume that if the Cowboys don't re-sign Prescott, they are unlikely to bring head coach Mike McCarthy back, either, especially given Dallas' recent postseason disappointments and the fact that McCarthy is also entering the final year of his contract. Whoever the Cowboys would wind up replacing McCarthy with would likely have significant sway over who opens next season as the Week 1 starting quarterback. Understandably, Cowboys fans bristled at the suggestion that Wilson could wind up in Dallas next season. OMG, Brett Hahn wrote on Newsbreak. I hope not, I can't stand Russell. If that happens, I know I won't be watching or going to any games. I realize Dak can't handle the pressure to end the season. But, damn. The Cowboys should be able to get someone worth the money. Meanwhile, Pedro Barrera added, Russell Wilson? You got to be kidding, he's done already. He's already cut from Denver. He sucks. This has got to be the stupidest thing to put up here for Cowboys fans to read.
Aaron Lopez also voiced his disgust on Newsbreak. Russell Wilson? Lopez commented. That's the most hilarious and absurd idea, ever. Russell Wilson is washed up. He definitely will not be coming to Dallas, unless he's coming to watch a game in the stands. And you fan? What do you think of the situation of Russell Wilson? Leave your opinion in the comments.